welcome back. You have just tuned in to Women's AM. This morning, I'm joined by Sister Saima, Sister Ayan, and our guest this morning is Sister Khadija Ali. Welcome back, Khadija. Jazakallah here for joining us this morning. We really appreciate you coming here with all the kind of other things that you have to, to juggle being a mother, mashallah. Um, and I think, you know, when you become a mother, you know, I don't know about you, I've got a daughter uh, as well, and I found that it made me think about hijab in a kind of whole new way because, you know, we've had our journey with hijab and now we're kind of preempting the journey that, you know, our daughters are going to go through. So are you kind of thinking this already about your little one? You know what you do? It's so funny because I've always thought that I'll be one of those liberal mothers and just, you know, let them choose what they want to do. But I think now that I have a girl, I'm just like, OK, you need to understand. This is fun. You need yeah. to understand. But <laughs> yeah. I think my mum, she gave me really good advice recently, and which was that, look, at the end of the day, if you have a good relationship with her and yeah. you make her understand, she would want to be like you. Yeah. So yeah. it kind of That's takes away that whole stress of, oh, you must know the obligations and stuff yeah. like that. Because sometimes kids don't feel that they don't have any choice and exactly. they want to cover up. But mind you, um, I did take pictures of her covered up. <laughs> She's only four months. <laughs> oh, I did that as well. I did that. Yeah. But I think, I think it's really interesting that you mentioned the, the kind of good advice that you've had from your mother. What yeah. about any, um, you know, non-Muslim family? Have you thought about I... how they're going to think about, uh, you know, because I, I get a lot of comments from my non-Muslim family yeah. about, you know, if my daughter's ever in hijab, you know, she doesn't have to wear all the time, obviously, but mm. they like to. Like you said, they like to copy yeah. us. And... Alhamdulillah, I think um, I live with my non-Muslim family and Alhamdulillah, they're very supportive, I have to say this, but I know when it gets to my daughter and because they feel so loved and they love her so much they can, there's going to be questions and I think they will respect my decision but as long as I'm able to communicate that with them sometimes what happens is that we don't know how to communicate with yeah. our Muslims and to them it seems like we're forcing our opinion on our children yeah yeah uh, I think that's something that obviously I'm going to have to discuss and talk to them about and mm. they see they've seen me covered up and they understand the rules that yeah. how I want to live my life and I think I don't think they will interfere, but it will definitely take discussion. Absolutely. I think, yeah. you, you know, two key words that you've touched upon there, respect and communication. Yeah. Mm. And I'm sure we'll be talking about that a little bit more in our discussion, inshallah. So Jazakallah here for sharing that. Now we're going to go straight to her views, where today we are discussing the hijab. The debate that continues to rage on is the topic of the Muslim woman, and particularly her dress code, her hijab. From hijab bans, to poppy hijabs, to hijabi tutorials. This is one aspect of Islam that seems to continuously be in the limelight. But how are we to view and apply this act of worship in our lives? Today we are talking about the issue of hijab, and what is our intention when we put it on, and the manner in which we wear it. As always, this is a live discussion, so do let us know your hijab stories, or of course you can pose a question to the panel. The number to call is on your screen now, or you can tweet us at Islam Channel, hashtag WAM. So Khadija, I'm going to uh, come to you first with this, and I want to start, you know, right at the very beginning. What is the purpose of hijab? I think first and foremost we need to understand that it's not to cover your beauty, yeah, it's not because you have hair, it's because it's an obligation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Now, there's, these days we see so many interpretations of hijab, like there's different styles, I mean you just have to go on YouTube and realise, hang on a minute, <laughs> there's yeah. about a billion videos yeah. of how to wear hijab, which should be very simple. Um, I can talk about from what, from Islamic point of view, which hijab means barrier, and it's been used in uh, in, in, in different ayahs of the Qur'an, uh, for example in Surah Maryam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells Maryam alayhi salam to speak from behind the barrier. Now the words that's been used to describe the covering is khimar. Mm -hmm. And that is to basically uh, mean top cover, yeah. And the ayah that describes that is um, it's in Surah Nur in 24:31. It says, "And say to believing women that they should lower their gaze and guard their modesty, and they should not display their beauty and ornaments except what it, what what appears thereof. That they should draw their their clocks over their bosoms and not display the beauty except that for their husbands, their fathers, their husbands' fathers, and their sons. Yeah. So this specific ayah actually discusses the hijab, the top." part of um, dress code. Now we know in Islam there's a dress code for social uh, aspect of Islam so when you're out of the house in a public life there's a dress code yeah. and the second part of that hijab is the abaya that um, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about in Surah Al-Hasab that um, Oh, people tell, uh, oh, pe oh, prophets tell the wives and the daughters and the believing women that they should cast their uh, outer garment over their, their persons, that means when they're abroad, um, that is most convenient and that, that, that they should stay, they should be known and not molested and Allah is of forgiving and most merciful. So it's basically to do with the outer garment, okay. that when you're out in public, there's a certain dress code that you have to adhere to and that is khimar, 
and abaya and the two ayahs actually this is the evidence for how you should be dressed yeah now i think ayan will probably go into different types of it but this is what i came across but it's quite the contrary what we see today because yeah. a lot of girls they tend to wear hijab and they ignore the second part of it but if you want to understand the whole meaning of hijab it's two parts okay and it's not one after the one or the other it has to be the full dress code okay and that's Islamic dress code basically that's what Allah has prescribed okay so that's you know I think you've made that uh, kind of very easy to understand we have the two parts um, yeah. and there's the difference between being out in public um, and and being at home yeah. and the different relationships yeah. and how we have to kind of adhere to different dress codes in different situations um, and I think that's you know that that's kind of easy to, 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 to understand really yeah. isn't it but sometimes we do get a bit confused messages uh, you know when people ask us why do we wear the hijab um, why do you think people have such difficulty explaining this Saima? Um, I think um, we need to understand that hijab is one aspect of a greater system in Islam and that system in Islam is the social system in Islam and um, the social system in Islam defines how men and women should view each other and the social system in Islam is, is, is designed to create harmony, tranquility um, to, for both men and women. Yeah? So there's a series of rules that fall under the social system and the objective of the social system is to give both men and women uh, dignity, honor, and security. Uh, uh, and respect. Uh, the hijab comes into that now, to, uh, but this can only be felt when there's a first and foremost men and women view each other in a certain way. There are two things you need to, for society to feel the benefits of, of hijab. Uh, we need to understand how we should view each other. In Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, chapter 9, verse 71, the believers, men and women, are awliya. Yeah, that means helpers, supporters, friends, and protectors of each other. So that is how we review, we view our relationship with each other. The second aspect is taqwa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So okay, having that taqwa? view, taqwa means fear of Allah. Okay. That you have God consciousness. That yeah. you are aware that everything you do is being noted down by the angels, and you will be resurrected and accounted on okay. on, on this. Yeah. So these two things together with these two things uh, uh, applied then you will see the benefits of hijab on society yeah because then hijab now acts as a protection for men and a protection for women and also facilitates this harmony this tranquility and this um, uh, support system for each other and this respect between each other uh, I don't think that's un understood mm. uh, you know and that's why people don't understand that hijab uh, it, w what the purpose of hijab is it's often seen as just a means of suppressing mm. yeah uh, the woman mm. in a society though where let me give you an example in a society where the predominant thought is that you are all individuals mm. and you all should be uh, your purpose in life is to pursue your individual happiness mm. yep. yeah how is hijab going to help society? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, uh, the only way you'll see the fruits of hijab is if there's a particular mindset on the relationship. Mm. If in a society you have this view that you're here to just be happy, you're going to view the opposite sex in that in that way. Yeah. That, okay, if I'm attracted to that person, I'm going to act in a certain way. If yeah. I'm not attracted to that person, I'm not going to act in a certain way. This now causes a lot of confusion and problems and um, a misunderstanding between the two genders. And, and there's no cooperation and there's no tranquility in that yeah. relationship. Yeah. So it's really important to, first and foremost, understand how Islam views men and women and that relationship and second of all combine that with taqwa God consciousness yeah mm. absolutely so it's kind of putting putting it in a bigger picture isn't I it? think I think to add as well to the misconceptions is that we tend to think that hijab is a choice yeah. and I think Khadija you've already mentioned mm. that uh, hijab is an obligation upon every woman so I think it's really really important to remember that while we live in a society that tells us that we're free and we we have the right to choose the things that we do we kind of incorporate those beliefs into how we practice mm. Islam as well and then that that leads to confusion as well and which is why you see different interpretations of what hijab means mm. you see all sorts of things going on even when it comes to the interaction between between men and women yeah. you see that there is no limit with how they interact with one another so you might see a sister who wears hijab but who behaves really inappropriately yeah. with the opposite sex mm. and the thing is that you that hijab is there like you were saying Saima as a protection for both so that there is that cooperation so we have to understand that while we live here, we may have the choice to do that, but ultimately our reference point is Islam and it's yeah. not really a choice 
at the end of the day because yeah. what good is choice if you're not aware why the choice is there in the first place? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah, there's another aspect yeah. I want to say. Look, uh, men and women in Islam are viewed as equal, yeah, from the perspective of humanity. Mm. Both are entitled to respect, honor, dignity and security mm. in that respect. But biologically they are both different and Islam does not oppress either one by not recognizing that. The man is not physically the same as a woman and, uh, uh, and the woman is not physically the same as a man. So therefore, um, Islam recognizes that. So of course people often question, why is it that only the woman physically wears mm. the hijab? Yeah. But there is a, a hijab for the man, yeah? He is biologically designed differently and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has catered um, for how to create that hijab mm. within him yeah. in a different yeah. way. So mm. just because we physically adorn a piece of cloth doesn't mean that the, there is no concept of modesty, um, respect and dignity that the man has to adopt as well. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I think it's absolutely true. And I think, you know, for us as Muslims, when we're kind of thinking about the decision to put on the hijab, mm. sometimes we do fall into the trap of not looking at it as an act of worship. Mm. Um, Khadija, why do you think that, that this is so often the case as Muslims, that we, we separate this from our other acts of ibadah? I think, you know what it is? First and foremost, it's hijab, wearing hijab in this society is not easy. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. It's not easy. That's one of the things. Second thing is that not knowing how it's linked to your ibadah and not really researching into it. That why is it like Simon went into details that we, you know how Islam prescribes the whole social system and how we should view each other. Yeah. But I think one of the main reasons why people tend to not see it is the fact that they they've not understood the obligation part of it. Second is there are many factors affecting us in terms of we live in a society where you know beauty is the main thing. Yeah. Mm. And now there's and you can see that in incorporating into Muslim community where hijab has become like a you know you're seeing hijab mo model shows, fashion shows and things like that. So beauty is pursuance of basically it's like happiness isn't it? Your beauty is if you're beautiful you're, you're, you're accepted mm. and I think that's one of the things that's really affecting our youth and us lot at the same time I mean we don't want to there are days when you're just like oh, I have to wear hijab but the only thing that makes you realize is the fact that you are obeying a loss upon and is, is a part of an obligation yeah and I think yeah. this is one of the few things that so can you lacking. beautify hijab can you beautify hijab to be honest my personal experience and my, what I think is the fact that you're wearing it for the sake of Allah, you know. It doesn't yeah. really, you know, it's so just that a piece of cloth. Allah yeah, Allah 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 Allah. Allah. But it doesn't mean that you can't look, you know, you look presentable, looking presentable is different yeah. to beautifying hijab these yeah. days, yeah, because yeah. we know what beautifying hijab is. Yeah. It's basically you've got a whole family at the back of your head. <laughs> you know, do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's very, it's, it's gone beyond looking even appealing. Absolutely, it's like, exactly. Hey, that's a yeah, fantastic a point. Lot. And we've had a really great start to this very important topic, but we do have to take a quick break now. But stay where you are as we will pick up where we left off in a few short minutes. But before that, a quick reminder of this week's competition. We can women there. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Women's AM. Apologies for the extended break this morning, but we are back now and we are about to continue our discussion on the hijab. So coming back to your sisters, before the break we were talking about um, this idea of the hijab being an act of worship. Um, and sometimes we kind of uh, move away from that when we're thinking about our intentions and why we're wearing it. Um, so Sister Saima, what's your, your thoughts on this, uh, you know, this aspect of hijab? I think there's two reasons why, um, I want to give them two angles. I think non-Muslims, for a start, will find it very difficult to view um, wearing the, a woman wearing the hijab mm. as an act of worship to your yeah. Lord. This is mainly because the media promotes um, uh, Islam as being a system that suppresses and oppresses yeah. uh, women and uses the hijab, um, the, uh, the covering of the woman, as a symbol, it's a symbol oh, of that oppression. oppression yeah? Yeah. So that's first and foremost. Um, and I think, mashallah, Khadiji did an excellent job by showing that the evidence in the Qur'an that um, speaks about the hijab being uh, a commandment from the mm. Lord. And actually, in other ayahs, there are further uh, ayahs that talk about how the man has to adorn a type of hijab, more mental than physical. Yeah. Um, okay, secondly, I think not uh, Muslims are also guilty of not understanding like how Islam uh, has prescribed the hijab mm. as, as a, 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 an act of worship. Yeah. Um, I think that's probably because Muslims themselves um, see the relationship. They don't, again, I want to go back to this point, they don't know how to view the relationship between the Muslim woman and the Muslim man. Yeah. Yeah? They see this as a problematic relationship. Mm. And you often see some knowledgeable people describing the woman as a fitna and, you know, as some kind of like, you know, um, problem for the man, yeah? And this is really, really damaging. I mean, this is so harmful for da'wah, and this is most importantly, it's not actually true. Mm. 
the again the ayah I want to give is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described the relationship between men and women in Islam as one of uh, partnership as one of uh, supporters to one another um, I think something that we need to understand is that um, the woman is not a problem and it's not that she uh, should be hidden away from mm. society, yeah? Just because we live in a promiscuous society or where women are seen as, like, um, um, Come on, objectified. Yeah, or, objectified, yeah. yes, yeah. exactly. This shouldn't affect Muslims, yeah? yeah? A Muslim man should view a woman whether Muslim or non-Muslim, uh, with honor and dignity and respect. Mm. It's not about her, oh, she's not, not covered, so therefore I can treat her like trash now. Yeah. This is totally yeah. incorrect, yeah? Um, the other point I want to make is that um, in a society, however, though, where if the predominant idea is that we are free and our pursuance in life is happiness, mm. whether a woman has got her head covered or not, she will be subject to harm, yeah? yeah? Because yeah. The, if a man purely views her, doesn't view her as someone that he's supposed to support, protect and honour, if he views that as an object to satisfy his base instinct, whether you're covered or you're not covered, whether you're Muslim or you're not Muslim, you will be subject to, the, to harm from that man. Yeah. Because it's to do with the ideas that he's yeah. carrying. Yeah? Yeah. It's not to do with a piece of cloth. A piece of cloth alone does not on, offer a woman any type of protection or yeah. honour or dignity or security. And we can see this from the statistics that come out from countries um, that show that attacks on women in Muslim countries where the majority of people are covered, mm. yeah, that you still see that there is a, a attacks on women and women do not feel safe because it's yeah. to do with the thoughts that yeah. are running through a man's mind, yeah. not mm. to do with whether women are covered or not. And I think this is something that we really need to see. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down this hijab, but it's part of a wider system, which like I said, views men and women, as, whether Muslim or not Muslim, views men and women as supporters and protectors of Absolutely. one another. And second of all, the society has to be based upon mm. taqwa, God consciousness. Absolutely, and it's about implementing all parts of these, uh, you know, the society for that to be able to work effectively yeah. and for the beauty of hijab to really be recognised. That's so that's yeah. a fantastic point. Jazakallah khair. Of course, this is a live discussion as always. So please do call in with your comments or questions. The number to call is on your screens now, or you can tweet us at Islam Channel, hashtag WAM. I think, uh, you know, this is really interesting when kind of talking about the theory uh, you know, behind the hijab, but to kind of bring it down to a, a more real level, we see a lot of sisters that are going through this transitionary period of not wearing the hijab to wanting to start wearing it, to actually putting on their heads and wearing it. And it's actually really difficult. And if you haven't gone through it, you can't really understand how difficult that is. Um, so what advice can we give to, to sisters uh, that, that are kind of going through this at the moment? I think um, for the sisters who are going through that, who are trying to put on the hijab, or who've just started to put on the hijab, know that, mashallah, you're being rewarded for the fact that you're doing something that you found difficult. Mm -hmm. Second of all, you're fulfilling a commandment. And third of all, you're you're elevating your own status by actually having taken that choice in a society which promotes otherwise. Yeah. And I think one thing for us sisters who already cover or consider ourselves to be practicing is that we need to support those sisters because mm. a lot of the time you find that sisters are quite judgmental about mm. how the sisters are wearing the hijab or they nitpick or sometimes they're just not very um, encouraging. So sometimes the way their body languages or the words that they use, it doesn't help the sister in actually wanting to keep the hijab on or to put it on in the first place because she feels as though these sisters, you know, I don't feel like I'm, I'm part of them so yeah. I don't yeah. want to be part of them because they're just treating me like this. So we have to say, MashaAllah, make dua that Allah keeps them steadfast and mm -hmm. to remember the example of the Prophet Sallallahu because the way he, in which he behaved with others and the way that he spoke to them, he always had this compassion, he yeah. always had this mercy towards them Absolutely. and he always left them with the feeling that they are special and yeah. I think we need to embody that as a Muslim mm -hmm. community, not just sisters but as a community yeah. and we're, we're missing that, we're lacking that a lot so we're quite, we're quite harsh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's true, I think sometimes we are very harsh with, you know, with sisters and there's that side of it where you think, you know, you want for your sister what you want for yourself and you, you really want your sister to put on hijab because you know that's what's best for her. So sometimes, and I'm guilty of it as well, you go in a bit kind of gung-ho and you scare them almost, mm -hmm. isn't it? Um, and, and sometimes it can be very, this is the ruling, this is a far, this is what you have to do. Um, and, and we don't kind of... I think we're guilty of letting ourselves down because we're not conveying the beauty of hijab. Mm. Um, and actually, you know, you, there are many different kinds of hijabs. We see it culturally from country to country and things like that. But uh, what I want to kind of uh, um, 
get to the bottom of now is what variations of hijab are actually acceptable uh, within the Sharia. Uh, Sister Saima, I'm going to come to you first. Okay. Um, well, basically, I think Khadija did a fantastic job in, in dissecting the ayah that talks about how to um, the Muslim woman should dress in, in public. Um, the khimar, which is the hijab, needs to um, cover the hair the, the, and the neck and, and drape, you know, over her front basically um, and the jilbab should be something that is described as barrel shaped which means that it should not um, if you put something in a barrel the nature of a barrel usually is that it's like kind of round so you can't really tell what shape something is inside the barrel yeah that's the whole point um, it doesn't mean to be poofy or anything like that it could be like cut to a certain about, you know, thing, like but you shouldn't kind distinguish. Of, um, you know, these tutorials that we see on, on, on sort of social media and things like that, about different hijab styles and things like that. You know, is this, is this permissible, um, Ayan? I think, first and foremost, you need to be able to uh, meet the requirements of what hijab mm. is. Mm. Like the sisters have already mentioned, your khimar needs to be, uh, has to come over your, ha come over your chest, needs to cover your hair, your ears, your neck, and then after that, your jilbab, your outer garment has to, doesn't need to be form-fitting. Yes. So it needs to be loose. Your 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 hands need to be covered up to your wrists, and then the jilbab needs to come down to the top of your feet or just past your ankles. I think once you've covered the requirements, then there's a room for manoeuvre. For example, pattern, colour, anything like that, it's fine essentially. But the thing is that you've got to meet the requirements. And sometimes with the sisters who do these tutorials, mashallah, you know they want to wear hijab, they want to be able to beautify themselves in hijab. But I think the premise is that they've misunderstood the point. Point of hijab. Yeah. I think once you've understood what it is, you find less of these variations that don't mm. adhere to what a hijab is. Yeah. yeah, I think sometimes we're kind of primed to think that a lot of our identity, a lot of ourself is, is kind of conveyed through the clothes we wear, uh, you know, obviously in kind of sort of pre-Islamic days, that's certainly an idea that I subscribe to. So you're trying to kind of find your own identity mm. within hijab. And I can relate to that, to be honest. Yeah. And I think just yeah. kind when of... When you start wearing hijab and jilbab, literally you do feel that your individuality has been taken away yeah. because yeah. now you look like a, a drone. Else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just look like a typical Asian or a typical Arab or something yeah. like this, yeah? Um, I want to give two examples if I could, yeah? First of all, one example that inspired me was the example of Zainab radiallahu anhu. She requested um, the other wives that when she died, that she be, uh, her janazah be carried out in, um, in the night time because she didn't want anyone to, because when you're wrapped up, isn't it, yeah? As when you're buried. She didn't want anyone to distinguish her, her body. Yeah, to see it. So even on her deathbed, she wanted to have hayat. Yeah. Second of all, she's also requested Allah subhanahu wa taala to enter into the jannah wearing the veil. Yeah, being covered. Again, even at the point of entering jannah, she still wants to adhere to modesty. These are very empowering uh, yeah. uh, uh, examples. The next example I want to give is just a personal example uh, that I experienced. Um, I really feel that Muslim women should wear the hijab and jilbab and wear it with pride when you mm, walk down yeah, the street, just absolutely. like football supporters wear their colours. Even if you're football team is like not even in the Premier League yeah hasn't even made it in yeah you see them supporting their team and wearing their colors with pride we should adorn the hijab and the jilbab walk down the streets with pride I want to give you an example that when male and female Muslims understand that this is our system this is a system it's a gift yeah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to create tranquility amongst humans I'll give you an example that of, uh, that of this happening yeah when I was in a mosque yeah, my son lost his shoes on the men's side I had to go into the men's side um, and and help him find his shoes when I came out there was a whole crowd of men waiting to pray Dhuhr yeah so I felt a bit uncomfortable because they see this one lone woman coming out the wrong entrance yeah coming out the male's, men's entrance did they see me as a nuisance? Did they insult me? Did they get annoyed at me? No. Honestly, it was like Musa parting the sea. Yeah? <laughs> they Inshallah. all, without any instruction from me or anyone else, they instantly moved aside and I had a clear pathway for me to walk. Yeah? Now, I believe, inshallah, all of those men would have done that whether I was wearing hijab or not. Yeah. Yeah? Because yeah. It's, they understood that I am your sister in Islam or whether I'm not mm. your sister in Islam or not, whether I'm Muslim or not, I have an obligation to honor you, protect you, and respect you. Yeah, yeah? and yeah. it was beautiful. Another example I can give, if you don't mind, <laughs> yeah, was in it was in uni. I need to use somebody's phone. Yeah, and the only person yeah. that I could find at that time was the Amir of the ISOC, who was an excessively strict brother, very very intimidating. And I thought, of all the people, I have to find him. <laughs> I needed to borrow his phone. He offered his phone to me. He didn't see me as a nuisance when I asked. He didn't say, oh, you couldn't find a sister or you couldn't speak to a woman, because that's not the mentality that we should have. We yeah. Yeah. have cooperation with each other we're supposed to help each yeah. other not be frightened of each other yeah. yeah he placed his phone on the floor 
Yeah. <laughs> now, a lot of feminists out there might think, oh my God, how disgusting. Mm. Is he repulsed by you or something? No, I thought, wow, you've got super fast thinking and you've mm. got taqwa flowing through you because yeah. you instantly realize that I need to help this sister, but I cannot touch her yeah. and violate her. Yeah by touching her unnecessarily. Mm. So he placed the phone on the floor, I used it, he moved away, used it as long as I needed to, and handed it back, yeah? This is examples of how practically men and mm. women work together with cooperation and harmony and tranquility. I yeah. think, but it breeds trust as well. I think that's yes. one of the issues. Yeah. I think we live in a society where there is so much distrust among people mm. that no one would dare to ask someone. Even when you do the smallest favor for someone, just an act of kindness, they're incredibly surprised. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, thank you, because no one expects that anymore because mm. we live yeah like we were, you were saying this individuality Absolutely. you know that unfortunately we all... this is the society that we live in yeah. now yeah. Um, honored, sister really. Khadija can yeah. I have a, a take-home message uh, uh, from you about the hijab okay what I would say is that hijab is just one obligation it's part of Islam mm. you have to understand Islam in submission and full submission and I tell you what when I started practicing it was one ayah that really really scared me and that was to do with that it's not it, I'm going to quote the ayah, which is, it's not for a believer, man or woman, when Allah and his messenger has decreed a matter that they should have any option in the decision. And this was the ayah that really sent chill down my spine. Yeah. I was just like, subhanAllah, I know there are days when I don't want to do something, when I don't yeah. want to wear hijab, when I don't want to, you know, when, especially when it's hot and it's summer. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, These yeah. are the ayahs and these are the reminders that will make you understand the hanging a minute. This is for real. It's that here and obey thing, here isn't it? Here and obey, to be kind of a bit detached from yeah. real. And um, Sister Ayan, what's your take home message about the hijab, please? I think that with sisters with the, who mostly have the right intention when they're covering, I think it's to go back to the sunnah, to go back to mm. the requirements of what a hijab is and try your best to fulfill that and for mm. other sisters to support them as well, yeah. to be yeah. gentle with them. Yeah, it's that thing of continuing to strive, isn't it, inshallah. Yeah, so Jazakallah here, sisters, okay. fantastic uh, uh, discussion about this. Hijab is not a symbol of oppression. Neither does it prevent women from acquiring knowledge or contributing to the betterment of human society. It's merely a woman's assertion that any judgment of her physical person will play no role whatsoever in evaluating her worth. Wearing the hijab is a freedom, but it's more than that. It's an obligatory ruling from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is packed with blessings and benefits. What a great discussion we have had about the hijab, and I always find it beneficial to revisit this topic, and I'm sure we will discuss it many more times, inshallah. And if you've missed any of this episode, you can catch the repeat tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. And, of course, we have our highlight show on Sunday at 3 p.m. that will give you a roundup of all the best bits from this week. Can you believe it's the end of another show already and another week? Subhanallah time really is fleeting but please do join us on monday live at 11 a.m for a discussion about the post conversion blues how many shahadas have we witnessed but as great as the hugs the congratulations and the initial gifts are what happens next are we committed to helping our new brothers and sisters long term make sure you tune in to find out what the sisters are saying plus we'll be joined by a familiar face from series one have a fantastic jumwa tomorrow and a fantastic weekend Jazakallah here to all of our panel, in particular our guest, and we'll see you on Monday, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. We're bringing Urdu programming to you. Islam Channel Urdu, coming soon.